Hello. In this video, we will be introducing the concept of a wave that will be important throughout the course. Um, and we're going to first build it up with something called the transmission line, which we will define in the second half of this lecture. A transmission line is a device that carries electrical waves, which we're going to basically define as voltages and currents that feed off each other. So let's introduce this concept uh, in three pieces. The first is, what is a wave? We'll talk about this very generically, not specifically around electromagnetics, but what is a wave in general? Next, we're going to specify a transmission line, which is a way of carrying electrical waves from point A to point B. And finally, in part three, we're going to talk about uh, how transmission lines uh, work and uh, what specifies their behavior. So starting off part one, what is a wave? So a wave, we can basically define mathematically. Okay, so let me just start off with the idea of an oscillation. So when I say wave, probably the first thing you would think of is an ocean wave, right? Where you've got um, these oscillating up and downs of the water moving. And so if you're standing in it, you, you bob up and down, but the wave is also moving laterally, right? And it's carrying energy or carrying information with it. So both those things have to be true. There has to be a back and forth to the wave but there also has to be a moving of information, a removing of energy, right? That's, that's a critical property to a wave. So let me first distinguish the idea of a wave from an oscillation. And so the way we do that is we're gonna define two physical quantities, A and B. And these A and B could be any two things that create each other. It can be uh, things like pressure, temperature, electric fields and magnetic fields, voltages, um, speed, uh, all kinds of quantities. But what's important is that your two quantities, A and B, can create each other in the following way. The first is that the derivative of this quantity A with respect to time will be proportional to the derivative of this other quantity B with respect to space or distance or X, right? That's gonna be the first quantity. Um, the other one is going to be exactly the same thing, except we're going to reverse it. Right, the derivative of B with respect to time is proportional to the derivative of A with respect to position. Right, so you can see there is number one, a duality or like a symmetry between these two quantities in that the spatial derivative of one creates a time derivative of the other and vice versa. And if we put these two things together, then that's actually the mathematical definition of a wave, right? anytime these two things are satisfied. And we'll look later about how this gives us the conditions of a wave, but let's just take this at face value. Um, and, but let me show you uh, an example in a minute. But before we get to that, I wanna distinguish a wave from an oscillation. And so let me show you this video right here. I'm gonna play it. The top panel is going to be a wave that's going to be moving and carrying information. The second will be just an oscillation that is bouncing back and forth, but not actually carrying any information. And the third will be something in between that we'll also see in this course. So let me uh, play this video and you'll, you'll see for yourself. <laughs> okay, clearly you can see the difference. The wave is moving, it's carrying information. The oscillation is not, it's bouncing up and down, but you can also have something that's a little bit up and down, uh, but also while it's moving. And that's kind of a mix of the two. Uh, this middle wave, by the way, we're going to call it later something called the standing wave. Uh, but it's really just a fancy way to say an oscillation. Right? But this is often called a standing wave. It's a wave that's just not moving or not carrying anything in, uh, in total. Okay. So um, what are examples of waves? Again, you could probably think of sound. You can think of ocean waves, of course, electromagnetic waves that we're going to focus on. But let me call your attention to something else that is a wave that you may not have even realized. And that is, if you are in traffic, there are waves all over the place that you can define mathematically. And the easiest example is if you come to a stoplight that's red, and let's say you're the 10th car back in line, um, and you're waiting, and then the stoplight turns green, right? At that moment, you're not moving anywhere. You're not going, okay? What happens is you've got to wait for a process that the first car has got to start moving. Once that car starts moving, the second car is going to start moving, and then the third car, and so on. And you've got to wait until that information gets to you, 
the information is, hey, the light turned green, it's time to go. And then you start to speed up as well. So that is a wave, it's carrying information backwards from the light toward you. And we can cast this in that mathematical way um, if we just take a look at this problem. So what are the two quantities A and B for this situation? Well, let's take a look. First, there was a quantity called S. S is the speed. And we can define this at any location X and any time T. So X can just be a one dimensional coordinate of where you are along this line. Right, so X is defined as X at any time T. This will just be the speed of whatever car is at that spot at that time. The other quantity is going to be D, which we can define at any location at any time. And this we're gonna call the distance between cars. Right, or you can look at it as, uh, you know, the inverse of the density of the cars, right? It's the distance between them. So let me take a minute to convince you that we can cast S and D precisely as these two quantities, A and B that I defined before, and look at this as a wave. All right, so let's think about the moment that this light turns green and this first car starts speeding up. All right, so here we have an S of X, T, and here we have an S at X plus, let's say one at time T. And the moment that the light turns green, this first car is gonna to start to move. All right, so we've got all of a sudden a differential in the speed as a function of position, which means that suddenly ds dx is going to be greater than zero, right? When that first car starts moving, you're gonna have a spatial derivative to the speed of cars, All right? So what's, what's going to happen is of course, when the front car is moving faster than the second car, those two cars are going to start to spread apart, right? So there's an implication if the spatial derivative of s with respect uh, is, is greater than zero, that must imply that the distance between the cars is increasing, All right? So here we go, we've already established that the spatial derivative of S implies that the, there is a time derivative to D. Let's try to go the other way now, right? Let's see what we can do with uh, DS DT. Actually, let me turn that around. Let me turn that around and start with uh, d, 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 x, okay? Let's take a look at this quantity, right? The derivative of distance with respect to position, right? So now imagine that you are this car that's, that's number two and you look ahead of you and you see that there's lots of space between you and the next car, right? Um, and it wasn't there before, but, but, but now there's lots of space Behind you, there's no space, but ahead of you, there's lots of space. That tells you that you probably should be speeding up, right? It's, it's your way of reacting to the fact that the cars are spacing out. So, okay, I think it's time for me to press on the gas pedal. So that's going to make you accelerate. And so if this derivative is greater than zero, that is going to mean that you are pressing on the gas pedal. If you press on the gas pedal, then uh, the speed of that car is going to start to increase, All right? So here we are, we've now established uh, these two quantities, S and D, which create each other with that uh, mathematical definition, the spatial derivative of one creates a time derivative of the other. All right, now let me point out a couple of important properties here about these, uh, these waves uh, before we go into this. The first is that uh, the motion of the wave is different from the motion of the cars. And that's a really important thing to distinguish. The cars are moving forwards, right? This is the where the velocity is going, but the actual wave is moving backwards. It's moving toward you, okay? So that's an important quantity I want to uh, lay out right now, that the direction of the wave is not necessarily the same as the direction of whatever is carrying the wave. And we're gonna see that in other contexts as well, okay? The other thing is that if I wanna be more precise about these definitions, I can say that ds dx equals some proportionality constant A times the derivative of D with respect to time. And I can also say that D, 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 X is gonna be some other proportionality constant B 
times the derivative of s with respect to time, okay? A and B are set by, for example, driver behavior, right? How quickly is the driver going to react when they see the car in front pushing ahead? Right? That's gonna define these. And the other one is defined by physics, you know, if the, if the, um, if the front car is a certain speed faster than, than the car behind it, then that defines how they're going to spread apart. So one of these is defined by physics, the other is defined by, um, by driver behavior. But if you put these two quantities together, we're going to see later, you can actually define a wave. All right. Uh, the other thing I'm going to point out is that A and B are going to be critically important for defining the behavior of the wave. Think about this qualitatively. If you have drivers that are very slow to react, right? They, they wait for a very long time. Maybe they're staring at their phone, for example. Um, and so they miss the fact that the car in front of them has pulled away. And only like a second or two later do they press on the gas pedal, right? That's going to change, um, you know, these quantities. And it's also going to change the speed with which this wave is moving, right? It's going to take a long time for that wave to get back to you as a 10th car. And so let me set right away the notion that these two proportionality constants, A and B, are going to be important for defining things like the speed of the wave, the, the speed with which it carries information. And we're going to see that it's going to be critically important. All right, so A and B are going to quantify that speed. All right, in this case, the wave represents a transfer of information, um, but importantly, it's not transferring instantaneously fast. There is that speed, all right? So um, basically what we're going to be doing, the whole of this class is going to be applying these principles to two types of waves that are prevalent in uh, electromagnetics and throughout electrical engineering. The first is voltages and currents on things like wires and transmission lines um, and, uh, you know, traces on circuit boards, integrated circuits, all those things. And then we're going to go deeper and really understand the voltages and currents as being electric fields and magnetic fields that are electromagnetic waves. And that's what underlies all of this. So the whole of this class is basically applying this principle to electricity and magnetism as well. So uh, that'll conclude this discussion on um, what is a wave. In the next part, we're going to actually talk about the specifics of a voltage and current wave, um, which we'll call an electrical wave on a transmission line.